assess its performance, identify vulnerabilities that need attention. The agenda, um, before we dive into the details, here is a brief overview of today's agenda. I'll begin with an introduction to 5G networks and uh, followed by an, an overview of the system architecture. Then I'll present the key research questions and a detailed explanation of the testbed components. Finally, I will discuss the experimental setup, the results, security vulnerabilities, and the future directions. Let's begin with a brief introduction of this research. Um, 5G network has revolutionized the mobile communication, bringing significant improvements in uh, latency, bandwidth, speed, and energy efficiency. So our study focuses specifically on the 5G standalone architecture. We represent the full implementation, implementation of 5G technology. Uh, we've developed a test bed operating in the millimeter wave frequency range between 41 and 78 gigahertz to explore you know, the capabilities and challenges of this cutting edge technology. In this slide, um, I introduced the 5G network and their impact on the mobile communication. You know, the global rollout of 5G has brought uh, improvement in latency, especially in the efficiency compared to the previous uh, generation. So 5G operates in two main uh, frequency ranges, FR1, which covers the band below six gigahertz, and the FR2, which includes the higher frequency millimeter bands between 24 and uh, 100 gigahertz. These frequency ranges enable 5G to support higher data rates, reduce latency, and additionally, there are two deployment uh, architectures. We have non-standalone NSA, and this relies on the existing 4G infrastructure, and we have standalone, which focuses on this, on, uh, on this which is our focus on this research, and is offering a fully dedicated 5G uh, radio access network. In this slide, um, I'll provide an overview of the 5G architecture uh, system architecture, which is essentially to understand the network operations and the components we analyze in our research. Architecture is uh, composed of three uh, primary components. One, the user equipment, UE, and this is the end user device. That's the phone mostly, we mostly use, and it connects the 5G network, such as uh, our smartphones, our laptops, our IoT devices. And in our research here, we use the phone cross-call uh, Core Z5. It's a 5G smartphone and specifically used for tests. Then the second part of the architecture is a radio uh, access network called RAM. Uh, this provides the wireless interface between the, uh, the user interface, uh, user equipment, and the core network. Uh, in the 5G, you know, the G node B serves as the base station using millimeter wave frequency to communicate with our phones, our user equipment. And our test bed included a G node B as part of this fire cell lab kit. And then the third one, the third part is the 5G core network. You know, this core network is responsible for managing essential network functions, such as session management, mobility, and data forwarding. Um, it, it consists of several components. We have the AMF, which is the access and mobility uh, management function, the SMF, which is the session management function, and we also have the user plane function, UPF. Um, here, the AMF, AMF handles, uh, uh, if you look at the picture, it handles the mobility and access control, while the SMF and UPF are responsible for data forwarding and session management. You know, this ensures high speed, the low latency communication we have now between uh, the user and the network. So by understanding this architecture, we can better appreciate how the network functions and how we assess its performance and security in our tests. Moving to the next slide, uh, this research aimed to answer several critical questions. First is, how do we implement an end-to-end -end 5G SA uh, testbed in millimeter frequency range? Second, can we revalidate this testbed performance in real world conditions, including the throughput, latency, and connectivity? Uh, so additionally, also, we wanted to analyze 
they captured network traffic we, we did to gain insights into uh, the protocol flow, we want to evaluate the packet loss compared to simulation, and finally, we want to explore how this test bed can be a platform for future research, including 6G and the security implementation. These are the research questions uh, this uh, we're able to answer in this paper. So what contribution did this research make? First is one, the deployment of a 5G standalone test bed. You know, we successfully developed and deployed an end-to-end -end 5G standalone test bed, which allowed us to conduct practical over-the-air testing in a millimeter wave uh, frequency range. And the test bed provided a robust platform for real-world experimentation and can serve as a benchmark for further research for our laboratory. And two, also, we analyzed the quality of service metrics. You know, We conducted a comprehensive analysis of the QoS metrics, which include the throughput, the packet loss, jitter, and latency. You know, This um, detailed evaluation helped us understand how 5G network performs under varying conditions, providing insights insights that can be applied to uh, improve network reliability and efficiency. Then the third is insights into protocol and the traffic flow. You know, by capturing the and, and analyzing the network traffic during our tests, we gain valuable insights into the behavior of different protocols within the 5G architecture, including the GTB, UDP, and TCP, which I'll explain later. Understanding these flows is crucial for optimizing network performance and identifying the potential uh, bottlenecks, like the vulnerabilities of the network. You know, so this contribution will help us advance and understand the 5G standalone network performance, and also provide like a, a solid foundation for future work, especially in the areas of security, uh, machine learning optimization, and uh, preparing. Uh, the CG development. Moving on to the next slide, um, these are the component, test components of our research. So we built a, a 5G standalone, uh, is a test bed, which is, um, includes several components. The primary hardware you see here is the FireCell LabKit 40 uh, V2.0. Uh, this LabKit provides like a necessary uh, functions of uh, the core network, like the AMF, as I mentioned, uh, SMF and also the user plane uh, function, along with the 5G node B, uh, which acts as a base station to connect to the user equipment. So the user equipment we use there is Crosstor. Um, you can see uh, the small uh, user equipment here is like a phone. And here we used it we to, we, to capture the analyze the traffic. We, we also relied on Wireshark which we know, all know is a network protocol analyzer. Uh, this tool allowed us to monitor the data packets transmitted between the core network and the uh, UA, UE, enabling a deep dive into the uh, standalone network. You know, also uh, helping us handle the real-time application such as video streaming. So this comprehensive setup uh, facilitated a rigorous and precise evaluation of the testbed capability in a controlled environment. Then uh, the next slide is, uh, this slide is about uh, experimental setup involving several key, key steps, you know, beginning uh, with uh, hardware testing. We had to ensure that the fire cell lab kit and the smartphone we're using were properly connected and communicating with each other. Once we confirmed that all connections were working, uh, we moved to the signal analysis where we examined the network access stratum NAS and also the radio resource control RRS and the next generation application protocol, NGAP. These are all protocols under the 5G, you know, uh, for that helps to verify the proper setup of the 5G session. So to validate the performance of the test bed, we stream YouTube videos on the user equipment, that's our phone. Uh, this allowed us to assess the quality of service metrics, you know, particularly we want to check the throughput, the packet loss, the latency in a practical, like over the air testing scenario. So, and uh, we, um, we achieved or actually ex exceeded our expectation, which I'll show you in the next slide. The, this slide, uh, the picture here 
shows the block diagram of the inner setup of the uh, experimental setup. Moving to the result and discussion after the experimental setup. Now, let's look at the key performance as, um, metrics. Our test bed achieved a peak downlink uh, throughput of up to five gig, uh, gigabytes per second and an uplink of throughput of one gigabyte per second, which is quite impressive. And these figures are in line with expected performance for a 5G uh, standalone network operating in the millimeter wave frequency range. In terms of packet loss, we recorded a very low loss rate of just about 0.45%. And this is a critical metric, you know, as, as low packet loss ensures the data is transmitted with minimal errors or need or the need for retransmission, you know. So maintaining a high quality uh, user experience, especially services like the HD video streaming, like the cloud gaming, you know, or the virtual reality applications. So um, also the latency was under 20 milliseconds, which is a significant improvement compared to previous generations such as v, uh, the 4G. You know, this low latency enables uh, real-time communication and responsive application like um, examples in the remote surgeries, uh, industrial automation, and also automation uh, autonomous vehicles that we use today. And this results validate the robustness and the cap capability of our 5G SA text bed, proving it to be a reliable platform for for future research. Also, we did a statistical analysis of the, uh, the performance metrics. Here, we uh, computed the mean values, the variance, and the 95% co confidence interval for both the throughput and the packet loss metrics. You know, For both downlink and uplink, the mean throughput was approximately 73.89 Mbps with a high relative variance, which is uh, due to the dynamic nature of the, you know, the wireless networks and the varying channel uh, conditions. The confidence interval for this throughput range from uh, between 50 to 97 Mbps, uh, indicating stable performance, despite uh, fluctuations we observe. And when we look at the packet loss, both the uplink and the downlink, uh, with mean values of uh, almost uh, 0 0.00368 for uplink and 0 0.0075 this for downlink. You know, this low value suggests that the network was highly reliable in transmitting data without significant losses. So the confidence intervals for packet loss are very tight, further reinforcing the test bed's ability to maintain high quality, error-free communication. These statistics results uh, underline this consistency and the stability of the test bed for various communication. Also, we also analyzed the protocol and traffic uh, uh, data. You know, we captured and analyzed this network traffic using the Wireshark, which was uh, an application as part of the suit. So, uh, uh, this analysis revealed that some interesting insights, you know, into how data flows within the 5G and SA network. The G GTP, uh, which is called the GPRS tunneling protocol, uh, this protocol is used for carrying data over the 5G network. You know, it accounted for 44% of the total traffic, emphasizing its central role in 5G data transmission. Then the UDP, which is the user data protocol, handled 31% of the flows, mostly used for video traffic, like the YouTube streaming we use in our experiment. Meanwhile, the TCP, uh, which is a transmission control protocol, accounted for 21% uh, of the traffic, which is typically associated with web browsing and um, also, I think, file transfers. A key finding from this protocol analysis was the dominance of this NGAP. It's called um, Next Generation Application Protocol. It considered 80% of the captured uh, packets. And this end gap is crucial in managing the signaling between the user equipment and the core network. This breakdown provides valuable insights into optimizing the 5G traffic management and uh, also improving performance for uh, different application types, whether for video, 
or web or significant traffic. Also, during our testing, we, we also had identified several security vulnerabilities in the uh, SA test bed. One of the primary vulnerabilities was in the GDP plane, and um, we find it was susceptible to packet injection attacks. You know, this, this can allow malicious entities to inject false packets it, it, like into the uh, data stream, you know, compromising the integrity of the whole communication. We, are, we also identified um, a, a man in the middle attack to risk during uh, the NAS and the EGAP signaling procedures where, where an, an attacker could uh, intercept and manipulate uh, uh, messages exchanged between the uh, user equipment and the core network. Another risk involved is the denial of service weakness from high signaling uh, volumes messages, or you know, overwhelm the network. You know, and this caused some service destruction. Um, additionally, the uh, AMF was also vulnerable. Uh, was found to be vulnerable to location tracking exploits, uh, potentially allowing authorized users to track the physical location of our user uh, equipment. You know, so and to mitigate these vulnerabilities, we recommend one uh, encrypting the user plane uh, uh, traffic with IPsec or maybe TLS, and uh, which could prevent unauthorized access to data packets. We also suggest uh, applying end-to-end -end encryption for you know signaling messages to block this man in the middle attack, and also uh, implementing rate limiting and anomaly detection. We will help reduce the risk of uh, Direct attack. Uh, why privacy enhancing technologies could prevent you know user data from exploitation. So uh, to validate this uh, experiment with real world findings, we had to compare the performance of our test board against previous five G simulation studies, particularly those uh, from the from the NS three simulator, those that uh, generation two generations till now. That's uh, what we did. The key takeaway from this comparison is significant, uh, and the difference, especially in the difference in packet loss rates. While the simulation reported a packet loss of 2.7%, our real world test board demonstrated only uh, 0.45 packet loss, and this highlights the enhanced reliability of the physical test bed in uh, handling real world condition. We also observed. We also observed uh, that our test bed achieved a you know, higher throughput and lower latency compared to simulation. This results uh, on the line, you know, the importance of practical experimentation in, uh, in complementing this uh, simulation. And um, this comparison also strengthens the case uh, for continued real world testing to ensure that 5G can meet the demands of high performance application as it's uh, earlier proceeded to be. Then, uh, looking ahead, our test bed opens up to several exciting opportunities for future research. And one of the key areas we want to do focus on is the zero trust security integration. You know where we plan to develop. We plan to develop a uh, advanced security framework that incorporates real time threat detection and mitigation. You know, ensuring that the five G network remains secure against evolving cyber threats. Another promising area we want to do is machine learning optimization. You know, by we want to leverage the data collected from this test bed, apply the machine learning algorithms to predict network behavior, and then optimize resource allocation, detect you know, performance anomalies in real time. This could significantly enhance the efficiency and resilience of future 5G and 6G network. We also want to see the test bed as a, a platform for CG exploration, uh, particularly in the fields of uh, ultra reliable low latency communication (URLLC) and also for uh, the massive machine type communication (MMTC), which ha is being explored now, and uh, also explored uh, the higher frequency bands that 6G will utilize. You know, uh, finally. Uh, the test bed has potential application also in Industry 4.0 and Internet of Things, you know, IoT. 
you know, by best matching, best, best marking the the test bed performance uh, in industry environments, we could support real time decision making and manage, you know, ma massive device connectivity, making it suitable for smart factories, uh, smart cities, and autonomous uh, systems. Uh, conclu in conclusion, our 5G standalone test bed successfully validated uh, its capabilities, achieving high, tr achieving high throughput low latency and minimal uh, packet loss. Uh, these results provide a valuable insight into how 5G network can support a wide range of applications uh, from high-speed broadband services to mission-critical communication. Uh, also, our test bed demonstrated its ability to support the need of real-time application, such as video streaming, industrial automation, and uh, position positioning it as a, a powerful tool for advancing 5G uh, research. Uh, looking forward, this testbed will, will we optimize, will play a crucial role in investigating next generation technologies uh, like 6G and also supporting innovation in industries like manufacturing, healthcare, and autonomous systems. Thank you for your attention, and I hope uh, this presentation has uh, provided valuable insights into our research on 5G network.